Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue working on our 2017 GMC Terrain. Last time we got our door on it, made it drivable. This time we're going to change our dog leg and get it apart so the painting gnomes can paint our door. And hopefully get it all back together. Let's get started. We're going to use our Scott powered frame rack for this one. There's no reason to clamp this up to the actual frame rack. We're just going to put the come along around the roof support for the building and we're either going to pull this out or pull the building down on top of us. Uh, one result is going to be slightly more entertaining than the other. Uh, but so far it's the boring method. It's actually pulling out this dog leg. A little bit slower, but we don't have to worry about repairing the paint from the clamps or taking the time to clamp it up. Just going to keep pulling against it. Now we're starting to drag the car over. We do have the terrain chained to a truck that's sitting next to it. So once the slack comes out of the chain, hopefully it stops sliding towards me or it'll end up on top of me. Also more interesting than if it actually works as intended. We're just gonna keep pulling it out. A little stress relieving as we go. I'm trying to get this outer panel as close as we can. There's still some inner panels we're gonna have to straighten later, but we wanna get our outer panel that we're definitely replacing as close as we can. So we're gonna move the clamp down a little bit, try to get this inner wheelhouse straightened out. It's really difficult because it is kind of like an S shape and we're trying to take out just the bend in the center. It doesn't always cooperate. We are pulling against the welds that are in there so they kind of want to tear out, but we'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, we're replacing that, but I'm trying to save it right now. now I'm gonna hammer it out. Left-handed hammering Scott is very disturbing and awkward. So we'll use our right hand and look a little less pathetic. So we can pull our gasket off the bottom here. It's going to be in our way. So there's a Christmas tree in the back and there's little T-clips. So we just got to stretch the gasket around the edge of the clip until it pops out and then slide it off the other side. And we can get those clips out later. We're only going to do the back half, just enough so we can get in there and paint it. And then we'll put it back on later. There's a useless molding underneath. We're going to pull that off of there. Same way, it just slides off the clips. We'll leave the clips in and pop those out later. We can pull our door gasket off inside the door so we can see all the spot welds for the dog leg we're going to change here. Pull the trim panel away. Just pop it out of its clips. We're not going to take it out. I'm just going to move it back so that we can stuff a welding blanket in there. We're going to be daring and try welding on one of these things without pulling the interior and without completely burning it to the ground. Uh, we'll see how that works out for us. So we'll start grinding out our spot welds. We're going to use a die grinder to throw as many sparks as possible to increase the risk of fire. And all the belt sanding fans can tell me that I wouldn't get this many sparks with a belt sander, and they're right. And I also wouldn't get to annoy you guys. So we're going to use the die grinder and we're gonna cut our piece where we're gonna splice it in. Now you can't do that with a belt sander. I guess you could, but it's gonna leave quite a mark in there. So we're gonna cut it out with our die grinder since we already had it. We annoy the belt sanding fans. I'll cut much further up on the parts car. So this might not be our last cut. Once we get it opened up and see where all the damage is inside, uh, if we've gone far enough, this will be our final cut. If not, we can go a little further. We have the pieces. Grind the rest of our spot welds out, and we'll cut the bottom. Now this one we can't go too much further because we didn't have a whole lot left from our parts car. So we're gonna cut it about where I think it's gonna end, and this should be our final cut. We'll finish cutting our line across the bottom here, and then we're gonna grind out all of our spot welds that are on the pinch weld down below. That's a good excuse to lay down on the creeper and take a nap. Now that we have our spot welds all ground out and the edges of our piece are cut, we can use our breaker to break all the spot welds out. These are available in my Amazon store. This is a flat one. And then in the wheel well where you don't have a lot of room, we have one that's bent at 90 degrees. So we just get it started and tap it around. We'll do our best not to rip everything to shreds in here because we are gonna need the pieces underneath. That's why we ground all those welds out of there instead of drilling them out. We don't want to go all the way through the panels underneath. We'll do that when we drill the parts car apart. Once we break all our spot welds loose, we'll just pry this piece off, all the foam, and bend it down. And we can work on the bottom welds. 
a little easier to get to it from this side. Knock those out of there. And uh, you know what we do with this. In a pile. Now we're gonna take out this inner piece. It's just a small little triangular piece that connects the dog leg to the rocker down below. Grind some of these spot welds out. I don't know why I decided to drill the first one. But this is why we're changing the outer panel, we're cutting it off, because we need to get to this inside panel. So no matter how straight we would have got the outer panel, we wouldn't have been able to straighten this unless we can actually get to it. And since it's just this little piece here, we're just gonna cut it out and replace it. It makes no sense to try and straighten it. So that's what we're doing. Go back and forth, break all the spot welds loose. And we ground through the other spot welds, and that go almost all the way through these, so whatever didn't go through, we're gonna knock them loose. Now we could spend some time straightening this wheelhouse, getting it nice and straight, hammering all the wrinkles out, and getting the bends where they belong. But it's much faster if we just cut it out and replace this little section at the bottom here. Uh, there's only about eight spot welds that hold it in, so in the time that it would have taken me to halfway straighten this thing out, it'll just be replaced with a piece that was never bent to begin with. We'll grind out our spot welds after we cut our line. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth until all spot welds give up. So to all the experts that say I need to play some music and time lapse everything, here you go. Uh, don't complain about the choice of music, you asked for it. Uh, and there's a time lapse where you can see absolutely nothing whooping really fast. So uh, yeah, I'm just cutting the pieces off. I'm cutting more than I need so that I will have extra. I can always trim it down later. Uh, it's kind of hard to weld it back together. It takes a little more time. So we're gonna drill everything out and we're back to our original car. We're gonna get all of our welds prepped. We're gonna grind off all the remaining weld and paint anything around the uh, weld area. Make sure we got a nice clean surface to weld to. Then we can throw on our weld through primer on any bare metal mating surfaces, AKA anything that gets sandwiched together. Again, it's not like regular primer, so you only want it where you're actually welding. So now I'm gonna do the only paint work I'm allowed to do uh, with a rattle can. Painting gnomes won't let me use spray guns anymore. We use the poor man's masking system. Uh, these are available in my Amazon store. They're free with the purchase of uh, just about anything you buy. We cleaned up all the welds on our little donor dog leg here. So we're gonna put our weld through primer on those and across our seam where we're gonna weld it together. We're gonna overlap this panel because it's the easiest and we don't have to worry about thickness because it is gonna get covered by other panels. So there's a little hole here on our dog leg and we're gonna overlap that. I left the hole in the donor piece and I cut the other piece at the bottom of the hole. So now I just line that up. That puts that piece exactly at the right length and we just clamp it up. It's about an inch of overlap. And these are clamps that kind of smash it together, get it nice and tight. And once it's clamped up, we can start welding. Weld all our spot welds and we'll weld that seam a little at a time so we don't warp our pieces. We're gonna weld both the top and the bottom. That way we don't have to worry about any pockets that are in there to collect dirt and start rotting. The grinding gnome stopped by, cleaned up all our welds, and we primed everything since we're hopefully never gonna see this part again. Now we're gonna clean up our little triangle piece here. Well, caffeinated Scott is going to. And then we'll put our weld through primer on there, get it ready to go on the car. It's a complete piece, so we don't have to worry about sectioning anything. I'm just gonna put it back where it was. I'll have our weld through primers on both pieces. So now we're just gonna set it up there. We're gonna put it right back where it was. We scribed those lines so we can line those up and we can go right off of our lines. And there's a alignment hole in there, we'll use that too. Everything lines up so we can start welding it in. I'm just gonna weld up all of our spot welds, no seams here, nice and quick. We do have to grind a couple down because we're never gonna see it again. So we prime that inner piece we're never gonna see again. We're gonna test fit our outer panel it fits, we're gonna pull it back off, put our weld through primer on, and put our foam in there, and slide it back up and clamp it up. 
everything looks good. So let's go ahead and clamp it up. Now we can start welding it. We'll weld those seams a little at a time so we don't warp it. We couldn't overlap those because this is an outer panel and height does matter. We want it to be flush, so we had to butt them up against each other and weld it. So now that the hard work is done, we're gonna do the easy job. We're gonna pull this door apart so that we can take it off. Right now we're gonna pull it apart, but we still have power from the car. We can use the window and it just makes taking it apart a little bit easier. So we'll pull the door panel off. Disconnect the handle and pull the wires through. And we'll pull the water barrier off. One of the most friendly water barriers ever. Very easy to reuse. Gotta be careful that it, the gluey, sticky stuff stays on the barrier and not on the door. We'll set it off to the side, keep it nice and clean. We'll unbolt the window regulator. We'll lower the regulator. We'll pull our window sweep out of here. We'll unbolt our regulator. And we'll slide it out of the way. Now we're going to lower the glass before it decides to fall down and turn itself into a 10,000 piece puzzle. Uh, that's a lesson you only have to learn once, unless you're a slow learner. It's happened to me a few times. It usually goes something like, I'll get in a second, I'm just going to take this other part off. Oh, just this other part. Crash. Well, get the vacuum. So we'll set our filthy glass back in the car. Uh, it's probably going to end up going back in that way. We'll pull our window channel out of here on the stationary glass. Connect our wire for our switch. We'll reach down in the door and see what kind of prizes we can find. Oh, a door check. Now we can unbolt our door. Got a little ahead of ourselves. We need to unplug the wiring harness. Nothing worse than unbolting the door and trying to carry it away and the wiring harness is still holding it on. That gets very awkward. Now that we have our door off, we can take it apart over here while our grinding gnome works over there. You can hear them in the background. So we're doing two jobs at once. We're going to strip all this down for the painting gnome, which is also the grinding gnome today. We're just going to pull everything off. We're painting the whole inside of the door. We need to strip everything out of it, including the wiring harness, because it is different. We'll pop the wiring harness off. I don't know why I keep saving these things. I have a pile of them, but I do. It's just a habit. I don't like to break things. We'll pull our door latch out, the rest of our harness, and we'll start pulling the door gasket out. We can reach in and squeeze the little tabs together. Gotta pop the clips off from the inside. You can get about 40% of the way around the door. The rest we're going to have to just use a pair of trim clip pliers and hope for the best. Pop this gasket off the back. It has the little T's in it as well. We just pull it off and once the gasket's off it's easier to get those T's out of there. We'll unbolt our airbag sensor from the door intrusion beam. Slide the sensor out. I'm just going to leave it in the harness and everything. Set the harness off to the side. Still plugged into the door latch. So in order to get the door latch off, we'll disconnect the handle from the outside. Put a little screw out of the back and pull the cap off. Slide the handle off. And there's a screw that holds the inside piece in the door. We'll just loosen that up and slide that off. We're going to take the door latch, the wiring harness, and the outside assembly all out in one big piece. And it's easier to get to everything when it's not in the car. So let's go set that off to the side. And now we're going to knock all of our rivets off the top of this trim. We already punched out the centers, so now we're just knocking the heads off. Give it a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Knock the ones off the front piece. 
slide the top piece out from underneath the front piece. And flip it from the door. And then we can slide the top piece up and set that off to the side. Now we gotta take the bottom molding off. It uses those friendly little clips that you can actually get a scraper in there. So we'll disconnect them all. And once we get enough of them off, we'll just slide the molding off and pull the clips out by themselves. And we'll slide the clips back in the molding so it's ready to go back on our door because we are going to need this since our original one was damaged. We'll put this someplace safe, uh, which is always as far away from me as possible. And that way it'll be in good condition when we go to put it back on later. Now we're going to use our industrial strength hair dryer to heat up this little rock chip guard. Uh, I don't use the hair dryer much these days, so at least that's good for this. Keep it a little warm. Makes pulling this off a little easier. Otherwise it comes off in little pieces. We don't have to put one back on. This was only on the earlier models. For some reason, stopped putting them on. I think they were a pain to take off and they really didn't do much. So, it saves me some time not having to put it back on. Now we're going to pull our front door apart so that we can sand the outside and get rid of the mess that the last guy left us. So in order to get all the moldings off, we need to pull this door panel off. Disconnect the handle, disconnect the wiring, and our door panel's off. We'll pop the top piece off. And we'll unplug our mirror, unbolt our mirror. Wiggle it out of the car. Now we can pull our outside door handle off. Pull a little cap off. And get to the screw in the back. Pull that little cap off. Got some nasty overspray on it. Same with the handle. And we can pop off our belt molding. Probably end up using some new handles so that we don't have to try to get the overspray off there. Probably easier that way. Pull our little foam filler out of here. And our door is ready for the sanding gnome to sand away on it. Now we're going to strip down the rest of the car so that the painting gnome has room to mask off everything. We'll pull the close out panel off the top here. A bunch of push pins and snaps in the back. And then we'll just slide the gasket off of it. Do the same thing on the driver's side. Bolt our grill. And because it's the 2017, there's a couple extra screws in here. We'll unbolt those. And we can pull our bumper off. We don't want to come off. I don't want to break this clip. So since I don't want to have to buy a new bracket, we're going to carefully pry the bumper out of that bracket and hopefully save it. Driver's side came out like it was supposed to. Now I can reach him back and push it off. Tried getting to the fog lights, but couldn't reach them. So now we can. We'll unplug those. They're actually daytime running lights on these. They're not fog lights anymore. We'll pop the plugs out of them. Try not to scratch up our bumper. We're not going to paint it. Then we'll go set our bumper off to the side. Keep it out of harm's way. Now we can use our excessively long extension to unbolt our headlight. And slide it out of there. Unplug it. A little safety out and release the plug. And then we can pull the bracket off the fender, Just pull the bumper and the headlight. And then we'll do the same thing on the driver's side. There's almost as much work removing parts to prep for paint as there is to actually removing parts to repair damage. So you got to keep that in mind when you're figuring on how much time you're going to spend on a rebuild. A little extra tape on the painting gnome. 
a priming gnome, I should say. And we'll pull these little gaskets off the side. It's the end of the cowl screen panel. Just clip in. I don't like these and I usually forget them. The painting gnome reminds me about it. So now we're gonna pry up against the paint. It really upsets the painting gnome when I do that. But it hasn't been painted yet, so if I mess it up, well, I give them some extra work. They clip into the cowl screen. So, a little rough to get out of there sometimes. Now we'll pull our taillight out. We'll pop the little caps out, pull the screws out. And the excessively long extension is a requirement. We're going to wiggle the taillight out. And we didn't need our tape trick this time. It gave up. Pop the cap off our rear bumper. Pull the screws out of the bumper. We are going to end up replacing this bumper. The crack was repairable, but there's a bunch of body work in it. And I'm pretty sure they use Bondo. So we're just going to get a new one instead of trying to fix the uh, somebody's been here before work. We'll pull the splash shield off of the driver's side in the back. There's a couple of brackets in the bottom. We'll pull the screws out of those. And pick them up before we drive over them. And a little wiggle and pull. Get the bumper out of the brackets. Unplug it and toss it in the pile. We'll pull the brackets off the passenger side so the painting gnome has something to mask off to. Toss that one in the pile because it's broken. Pile. Now we're going to pull our filler door apart. Pull the cap off, a little tether. And remove the cap. Slide the tab out. Then slide the fuel door off the bezel. One bolt the filler neck. Pop the bezel out of the quarter and slide it off the filler neck. Now we'll pull our SLE letters off. Send those to the retaping gnome and let him retape those for us to put back on later. And I'm too lazy to go get the magic eraser, so we're going to do this the old fashioned way. And this is exactly how we used to have to take this off before they had the magic eraser. It's all right when you just got a, three letters, but if we were doing a big side molding or a bunch of nameplates, the thumb gets pretty raw by the time you're done. Maybe I should be wearing gloves for this. I'll pull our hatch gasket off of our quarter glass. So we have access to pull out our quarter glass. I'm not going to do it. I'll have somebody do it. It's not a job I care for. We'll pull our spare tire cover out. And we can pull the little closeout panel out. Squeeze the little tabs and slide it out. They're very similar to the headrest clips. We'll pull our sill plate out. Pop our little caps off for our cargo hooks. And unbolt our cargo hook. Pull the lower trim off. Use our bumper installation tool because I don't want to walk back to the toolbox and get the quarter trim removal tool. Slide this thing out of there. I'll pop the little caps off so we can see the screws in the upper quarter trim. Pull the screws out and slide the trim off. Can't take that out because the seat belt's holding it in. Now our painting and bodywork gnomes have been here. Our door is all edged out. Our front door is primed, so we're going to throw the back door on so that they can paint the outside of it. So we'll put our striker in. We'll run it in slowly so it can self-center without dragging the bracket out of alignment on the inside of the quarter panel. And then once it's aligned, we we'll snug it up with our impact that identifies as a torque wrench. Make sure it's properly torqued to spec. And we'll throw our door latch back in our door. Bolt it in. And then we can set our door back on the car. 
We'll latch it on our striker we just put in. Hopefully don't damage any of the paint. Latch it in, and then go up and start our bolts on our hinges. Snug them up, let them self-align, and then once they're all in there, we can tighten them all down. Manufacturer specs, measured in Uggadugas. So we'll pull all our paper off. This is as close as I ever get to a Christmas present, since I can't behave all year long and Santa doesn't bring me anything. Uh, we mask it off so that we don't have overspray that we have to sand through. So it's easier to pull the paint off than try to sand through the overspray. Now we're going to pull our roof rail off for our roof rack. We'll pop the cover on the outside off. Once that's off, four screws, four nuts actually, studs that go through the roof skin. So we'll pull those off. And we'll disconnect it from the front piece, slide it back, and then we can get that front piece off. I'm going to pry it up and use a long fork, and we're only going to pry in that channel so we don't dent the roof and pop it out of all the little studs. So we got our door back on, we got everything stripped down, it's ready for the painting nose to work their magic. So once they're done, we'll put it all back together. Now let's get out of here so that they can get in here and do their stuff.